Now, in terms of knee, in terms of winds, offshore area provides stronger winds, and not only that they are stronger winds, they are more or less constant winds, because the water is flat, no obstacles, no mountains, no valleys, no long towers, buildings, so the wind is much more predictable wind, stronger and predictable. And because it's flat, less turbulences. Winds offshore blow nearly 40% more often than on land. Because the wind has no obstacles, it just runs and runs, flows and flows. So because it's flat and there are no obstacles, 40% more effective movement of air. Onshore, because of different directions of winds and winds hitting a mountain is being reflected to another mountain, being reflected to a valley, there are, some, there are times that there's no wind at all. Onshore, smooth flow. Offshore wind farms can outpace those on land in terms of capacity and possibly offset the higher, the higher construction cost. Today, there is a lot of specific design equipment to install offshore. We will talk about installation and maintenance later. But today, to produce to establish offshore wind farm takes less time slash lower cost compared to produce the same amount of output power from an onshore wind farm. But there are still many, many challenges. Construction, for example. Time, planning, people. There are a wide variety of professions related to offshore. Professions that related to building the turbines. Professions related to building the ships that we use to install and to transport blades and towers offshore. Professions and job employments related to substations, huge transformers, and establishing a substation by itself. Professions regarding cables themselves. We're talking about many, many, many kilometers of cabling, very high voltage, and later on in this session, we will evaluate and we will learn what is an offshore wind farm cable? But it's a tremendous industry only right there. So that's in the construction side. Operation. Offshore wind turbines operate in harsh environmental conditions. They are exposed to harsh winds. They are exposed to wave conditions. So they are operated year after year in harsh environmental conditions. So there's a challenge right there. And when we build an offshore wind farm, we don't build it for one year, we build it for tens of years. So operationally, we need to build it, and it's a challenge by itself, in such a way that it will withstand these harsh environmental conditions. Another challenge is when it comes to grid connection. When we locate a wind farm offshore, we have to, in parallel to that, locate and establish connection place, which it called pit. We have to build a pit in order to collect the energy running on the transmission lines from the offshore to the onshore. So, parallel to establishment of 
offshore wind farm, we have to establish onshore substation and pits before we go and distribute it to the various customers. And then comes the challenge of cost. The overall cost of offshore wind energy exceeds that of onshore due to higher component cost. And they are, they are, it's more expensive to install and support the structures because they are exposed. There are ways that we know today how to lower the installation cost. We will discuss about it later in the session. But still, it's, it is a challenge to reduce it. Cost is very, very high. Offshore turbines have technical needs beyond those required on onshore because of the exposure to environmental conditions. We need special substructures. They are being exposed to dramatic natural forces. We need to strengthen the tower because it's exposed to wind wave interactions. We have to protect the nickel components from sea air. It's a very salty environment. And we have to color the various parts of the entire farm and in order to make it clear day and night to airplanes, ships, which might be in the area.